different steps of, of formulating a strategy, uh, developing your goals, your, your SWOT analysis, etc., to see who and what you are. Then you've gotten to the point where you're, you're generating ideas to reach your goals. You tested those ideas through logic, and you develop action steps from those tested ideas. And now you're saying, okay, I've got all that in place. I got to write it up. Now, why would you do that? Why would you want to write that up? And um, you know. A, and, and there are a few reasons, but one of the primary ones in, in your business, of course, you've got to get other people to agree with what, you've, what you're have what you proposing. You've got other people to agree with what you're uh, recommending. You may have to get investors to agree to put money into your, your project, internal and external. Maybe you have shareholders you want to address. Maybe on a smaller scale, you're doing a small business, like an uh, entrepreneurial type thing, you need to have friends and family you have to convince. But somebody has to be convinced that you know what you're talking about and you know what you're doing. And you and just sitting there talking about it, it doesn't give them the time to really review it in a way they, they want. Maybe they want to take it home with them. Maybe they want a long thing. Maybe, uh, anyway, and But you have to have it written so they can analyze it, discuss it. For you, it might be fine. You have it in your head, but that's not going to get you anywhere in business. In business, you have to be able to convince other people to follow what you're recommending. And that's why I've gone through these other steps in the beginning because that's how you build the logic of your argument. Now you're putting that together. In fact, uh, once you have all the piece in hand, it flows really naturally from the lo logical proofs exercise. Remember, you've already had the goals, you've already tested the ideas to reach the goals, and then you tested those ideas through the logical proofs exercise. Once you've tested those ideas, it's basically taking that uh, tool and turning it into words. Um, of course, it can be more complex than that, you can fill things out more with more graphs and charts, etc. But basically, you're taking your proven ideas that have been tested by logic and turning them into a written document. It goes pretty quickly, as you see in the book. Um, the, some key thoughts there uh, when you when you do that when you transform when you write that through you, you, there's some numbers involved in all businesses number businesses are numbers and uh, you may, may, their dollar volume uh, whatever they happen to be but you're generally objectively numerically measured on what you're proposing and what you're doing so the numerical part of your strategy is basically going to be uh, you know what's the best most accurate story I can tell from the results of, of what we do so you want to really want to say where we were where we are now and where we're going to be if and when we follow this strategy that I'm proposing. So those are the numerical things in your graphs and your spreadsheets, etc. Uh, will will show that where you've been, where you are, and the different uh, alternatives if you follow a strategy. If it's kind of and if it makes it at you know high level, mid, etc. So the numerical aspects are, are you want to tell a very very accurate story and a very relevant story. You don't want to fudge your uh, numbers too optimistically or too pessimistically if you go under if you undershoot your numbers then you're bored and other people will say right away you're, you're sandbagging it you're not trying hard enough you're you're creating some space for yourself to to succeed if you go too high then you're constantly um disappointing the people at the end of the year however i will say that you should push hard it's better to go over than under and you can always say why you didn't make it, but it pulls everybody forward if if you're pushing hard towards your numerical goals um, a very, very simple way to look at a strategic plan and a strategy in general is to keep and grow the good things, bring in new good elements, and get rid of the bad stuff. I know that sounds really simple, but it's kind of what you're really doing. So when you talk it through, when you write it through, keep in mind that you're thinking, you know, what's good about our company? What do we want to do more of? And if you think about expanding to other countries, what do we want to bring of, of what we're strong here into that other country and make it and, and enhance what we do and, and, and make it successful at that new location? You want to, so once that you like that kind of thing, you want to bring in a, bring in new good elements. I, I'm what I have already. I'm moving and growing. Now I can think, what can I add to that to make it even better? And especially when you go into other other markets, you'll see that what you're doing now is great. Maybe it fits, but you're going to have to tweak it. And those tweaks could be local tweaks, could be adjustments, like we saw in the Oreo case, and we and you saw in Starbucks case, etc. You have to make some adjustments in the new market that'll bring in better elements, enhance what you're already doing. And then get rid of the bad stuff. A lot of companies fail here, and I hope you're not one of them. When you uh, get uh, the possibility, if it's not working, don't keep doing it. Don't hammer it. Don't carry. Don't bring with you this baggage and that stuff that doesn't work from the past. The quicker you can determine that something's not working and undo it, the more you money you save and focus and attention you can apply towards the things that are working. So um, you'll see a great resistance to this uh, in business. People say, "Oh, we'll give another chance, give another six months, give another year, uh, keep that person, keep that unit, keep that department, uh, keep that location on for a little bit more." Uh, it, it, it doesn't work. Uh, the quicker uh, you can you can make decisions on what's not good for you, not good for your company, not good for uh, the, and, and undo that the faster you can get towards refocus. You feel 
much better when you're making those tough decisions. Some of them are very hard. Sometimes you'll be affecting people you really know. Maybe you know that, that maybe something you've even created yourself, and that's just not working anymore. It has to be moved on. Now, remember your financial forecast and a strategy are basically what will happen if the strategy succeeds. So think of it, even it can be very elaborate, and it's you can call it a budget, volume, whatever you want to call it. It's usually a, a, a yearly budget type thing and a projected forecast budget of, of what will happen. But basically, they're saying if we do this strategy, this is what's going to happen, and that's really important because people want to know how much money they're going to make, how much better off we're going to be in a company if we take that location, we move to that country, if we expand our operations here, there, or wherever. What is going to be the bottom line result over one, two, three, four, five years? or longer if you can project that that way, but usually three to five years, one, three, and five are, are good. So you understand that? So you really see that your financial forecast, you just think of them, all I'm showing in numbers what I think is gonna happen if we do this strategy and do it well. Finally, uh, I'm just gonna say a few quick um, thoughts on your strategy. You can read those on the slide. Um, and I'm not gonna go over those too in too depth, but basically when you, you, you I have here on this slide basically like a table of contents. So you think, this is how, how my strategy is going to write up and look. I'm going to have a, a, an outline um, and an introduction. I will say something quickly about the introduction. On the introduction of anything that you write for business, you want it to be very clear and concise and say exactly what is happening now. The following paragraphs outline the strategy for this company. Um, Today's, uh, this memo covers the operation that we're going to do over here. This covers what happened recently, whatever. You go directly to the point. You should do that all the time, of course, but that when you start off going all over the place, uh, it, people get really distracted really fast. People in business are extremely busy, they don't have much time, and their attention spans are very short. Grab them, hold them, and focus on what you need to talk about. So, um, when you have the, you've done that, when you do the business viability assessment graph, you stick it right there in your document, because that's and that's what we're going to work on a lot on your project is really rounding out and learning how to really use that business viability assessment graph uh, well and that whole tool. But basically, you want to go for your your uh, introduction right to right to um, why you're, the, what you're talking about is in this new location or wherever you're proposing is viable. Back to introduction a bit. Uh, always good to start off an introduction to a memo or, or a strategy or anything by having people agree with something you're saying. I'll say that in a different way. You want to get people, you want to say your first things, a concept or, or some statements that everyone agrees with. You know, we, we've been around for X amount of years and now we're moving to this. That's obviously clear. If you say anything other than very uh, um, easily understood and, and all uh, something that everybody agrees to, you get people distracted. You want in the beginning of anything you're proposing to get people to start nodding yes with you. Then you move on to the more challenging thing. But in the beginning, you want to start with something that everybody agrees with, positioning, and you can move forward. We'll go through the quick other. Um, you've seen these other things in, the, in where we've gone so far, but your strategy document will then have a SWOT, the competition, You'll, come, you'll, you'll do your goals, you'll talk about ideas how to reach those goals, and you'll, you'll, you'll do that, you'll see how the goals are, 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 are effectively um, tested. You're only going to use the, te you don't have to go through the testing process in your document, you only use the tested goals. And then you'll go through the, strat the action steps, etc. Now remember, since you've gone through the logical um, proof of these, the, what you're writing down, it, ge it gives you a lot of confidence when people question what you're writing. If you think people are making too big, have to make a jump with your writing, and even though you know the answer uh, because you've gone through the testing, put it in the written part so that they can follow the logic of your of your ideas well. In fact, for example, if you said something like, we know this will work because, you know, in this country, uh, or, or we're going to send 10 people to this country and now we're going to generate sales by X amount. Okay, and then you might have to put an example. We know this is true because we've done this in this in these other countries, or we know this is true because we've seen another company that's very much like ours do the exact same thing, or we know this is true because the same manager that we're going to send there has done this in three other locations. We sent him, him, he or, him or her in the past, and they've been able to develop the business. So if you think there's something that you're saying, you've tested it, but you don't know if they can, they are just going to accept it, just fill out you know, with that, show your logical proof there. Then you do a summary. And, uh, uh, um, and wrap up everything. And then 
the append appendices. Appendices are really going to have in a, any kind of document because you want the document to be as short as possible and as concise. But if there's other information like a project study or uh, regional information or geographic, uh, demographic, or, or any other kind of information on that location, or maybe you're opening a mine, so you want to attach a mining study. It could be 80 pages or 200 pages long. You don't want to put that in your actual document, but you use it as an attachment and appendix to your uh, points. Okay, so I think that's the that's it for that. I think the main thing is just to remember that when you get to this point in your strategy, you're going to want to document it. It's powerful when you document it and doing it logically and following exactly the steps that we've uh, covered so far in, in the in, uh, strategy development process will really get you where you want to go. All right, hope that helps. Thanks.